you know what's gay? Girls. Yeah, that's right. I'm tired of talking about all these girly shows about high school girls and their girly problems like hairdressing, love confessing, anorexia, body dysmorphia, cake. Whatever happened to all the good old shows about men? Sexy men with powerful jaw structures and really hairy chests. Today we're going back to the past to get some of that. And I believe that there's no excuse for us not to start with the creme de la creme, a classic among classics, the unsurmountable peak of cock erecting energy known as Cromarty High School. Sakigake Cromarty High School is a 2003 surreal comedy anime based on the manga of the same name by Eiji Nonaka. The series functions as a parody of the popular genre of delinquent manga that swarmed the Japanese comic markets from the 1970s all the way up until Cromartie's debut with the start of the new millennium. Yankee manga, or Yankee if you have self-respect, consists of stories set in urban environments focusing on the struggles of juvenile delinquents and their quest to rebel against their stringent Japanese society while at the same time indulging in the pleasures of conformity by wearing identical schoolboy uniforms but they left them slightly unbuttoned, so it was still pretty punk. They all had really goofy haircuts that were often so stupid they circle back to being unquestionably fucking awesome. Cromarty High School aims to dismantle while also celebrating the conventions of the delinquent genre, managing to place fresh new spins on worn out archetypes without neglecting what makes those archetypes beloved to begin with. Now hold the phone, things are starting to sound a little too sophisticated here. This anime is first and foremost a surreal comedy filled with absurdity and nonsensical gags that will either leave you pissing yourself with laughter or scratching your head in perplexity. In episode 8, the entire cast throws a birthday party for Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury is also a recurring member of the cast. He's just there. All the time. There's also a monkey. Do we have any heavy duty spray adhesive? <laughs> Let's back it up and start from square one. Takashi Kamiyama, an upstanding gentleman of 16 years, decides to enroll in the absolute worst high school in Japanese history, Cromarty High, a place where the scummiest, most badass thugs in the land all gather because no other school would possibly accept them. Kamiyama, believing in redemption and the good of mankind, promises to fix Cromarty High and set its troubled student body on the path of righteousness. He gives up this goal about halfway through. The rest of the series is just jokes. Some jokes are about jokes. Some jokes serve as meta-commentary for the entire series itself. And others are about poop. The magic of Cromarty or at least what drew me into it a long time ago, is the ensemble cast of extremely stupid teenage boys that look like 30-year-old men, and how deliciously subversive their characters turn out to be. Kamiyama, of course, is the golden boy. The one noble student in a school of vicious criminals who against all odds manages to place himself near the top of the pecking order due to his wit and ability to somehow outstupid his tormentors. Along the way he befriends fellow students Hayashida and Maeda, the latter of which is so unremarkable that his own mother becomes more popular than him. Later, we're introduced to rich boy Hokuto and his unnamed henchmen who accidentally enrolled in the wrong school in an attempt to conquer the Japanese education system. And at the top of the ranking stands the boss of Cromarty's first year class, Takenuchi. His identity will eventually be stolen by Mask Takenuchi, the far superior Takenuchi in my opinion. If my brief as hell descriptions didn't get it across, these are not the most complex characters ever written. Each of them possesses a trait customary of the delinquent archetype, and then an opposing trait that exposes them as complete buffoons. They simply exist to be placed within scenarios that exploit their critical weaknesses, and from there the comedy ensues. Extremely simple setup. However, in comedy, setting up a joke does not always mean it's guaranteed to land. For every joke that has a smooth landing, you'll likely wind up with about 10 plane crashes, killing the hundred metaphorical passengers making up your audience. Cromarty High School, from my modest point of view, knows how to fly that plane of comedy like an ace. No, not every joke is a side splitter. 
Some of them admittedly suck and are probably too Japanese for an American boy like me to understand. But good humor is not barred by national boundaries. Without spoiling all the best gags, let me offer an instance or two of Eiji Nonaka's mastery of the funny. <laughs> These characters are all walking stereotypes by design, but at the same time, they're also walking contradictions due to their individual quirks and hypocrisies. Takenuchi, for example, is the biggest baddest guy in the whole school, but he is horrendously susceptible to motion sickness. The first half of episode 5 sets up this crippling weakness, as Kamiyama unknowingly terrorizes Takenuchi with his irritating enthusiasm and forced pudding. However, all that setup leads into the second half of the episode, where Takenuchi, Kamiyama, and Hayashida all have to take a cab ride to get to a rival school to rescue Maeda. We have a classic setup here. This scene pushes the motion sickness joke to its limits by making Takenuchi's horrible situation worse and worse with each minute. The driver gets lost and spends hours driving aimlessly. The map they're trying to use is an outdated world map, so it's useless. Freddy shows up at one point and gives them the wrong directions. And Takenuchi, meanwhile, is silently suffering in unspeakable agony. The taxi segment, with its endless elaboration of a character's tragic flaw and the increasing surreality of the situation, exemplifies all the best elements of Cromartie's humor. No character is immune to being the ass of a joke, and no scenario is safe from spontaneously shifting into insanity. And no matter how crazy things get, Kamiyama is always there keeping a straight face and maintaining his level-headed composure, which only makes the situation even funnier. See, this is how you do a straight man. Oh, that didn't sound good. This style of comedy is not for everyone, and believe me, there are ways to royally fuck it up if you're not clever enough. But Cromartie's relatively straightforward adaptation of the rapid-fire humor in its original manga is handled sublimely. I'm sure many of these jokes don't retain the same impact they may have had in a printed format, but that's just the price you pay for a well-directed piece of animation. That's another thing worth discussing. Who was it that took on the incredible task of translating this hilarious piece of literature to a bunch of early 2000s television screens? Ah, it's our good friends from Production IG. Yeah, they're alright. More interestingly are the contributions from director Hiroaki Sakurai, the Japanese Terry Gilliam. He's a man drenched in the offbeat, dry flavors of comedy traditionally found in Japanese humor. But his keen sensibilities for timing and reactions always feel more akin to the works of all the other masters of sketch comedy. Just looking at the more surreal parts, it's very easy to see how Cromartie's adaptation was influenced by Sakurai's previous work on DG Carrot, a series that also had a fast-paced, brain-molesting sense of humor. Deiji Ko herself even makes a few cameos in the show, like a cat girl Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Visually, I believe Cromartie doesn't offer anything spectacular when it comes to heightening a joke aside from the expert timing on certain punchlines. This isn't meant to degrade Sakurai or anyone else who slaved away in the production IG salt mines, but you don't need to be a master analyst to see that this is some pretty cost-effective animation. Lots of close-ups, plenty of still frames with voiceover monologues because, I don't know, it costs a million yen to make a mouth move or something. And a shit ton of Pico the Spicy Warlord tier editing where you just fucking move an image across the screen and then sloppily throw a bunch of other stuff in the background. You know, we're really going for the ADHD after-school crowd. There's a reason all these episodes are only 11 minutes long. For every segment of incomprehensible zaniness, though, there's multiple other placid, easy-going scenes where characters will just stand around menacingly and discuss a variety of philosophical propositions regarding the nature of human prejudice and intellect. Okay, 
やるまるで手品のようだぜまさに真相心理を巧みについた手法だなこれは There's a definite balance between the weird and the relaxed, and I feel the show never dips too far towards one direction for an entire episode. Yeah, you're gonna be bombarded with sensory numbing chaos for a couple of minutes, but you'll always be given some room to breathe for a moment and think, was that actually funny? Eh, yeah, it was good enough. The unusually short runtime also greatly benefits the series, giving you just enough time to be exposed to Nonaka and Sakurai's combined powers of brain rape before you get used to it and lose interest. I wouldn't be surprised if Western cartoons were another source of influence for the staff, considering how 11 minutes worth of crammed in craziness is the norm over here in America when it comes to animating shows for our highly intelligent audiences. However, because of the quick fire pace and dialogue heavy jokes, it can be pretty difficult to keep up with the show and catch all the details. You'll get caught up reading the subtitles one minute and miss an entire sight gag or two in the background, which there are many of throughout this anime. Because of this, many fans would recommend watching the show dubbed in English in order to focus less on reading and more on the scenery. Regardless of your opinions on dubs and the disreputable people that make them, I'll give you my assurance that Cromarty High School possesses one of the best dubs to ever come out of Houston, Texas. The localization process was handled by a guy named Stephen Foster, the same man responsible for spawning 20,000 YouTube compilations of the Ghost Stories dub. <laughs> And I think most of the comedy was carried over across the language barrier without experiencing too much Americanization. Looks are a vital part of being a delinquent. Amateurs should try bleaching their hair blonde to look tough. Be careful. If the chemicals are too strong, your hair will turn white and you'll look like a pussy. Damn it! You know, it's not an Oscar-worthy performance or anything, but the dub certainly has its own charms that justify its existence. And I've even heard other fans claim that it's superior to the Japanese version. Personally, I find the dub amazing purely because of the voice actor's inability to give a single shit. Get up, Freddy! You're sitting at my desk! Yeah, get up! This isn't even your classroom! Look, you dumbasses! Our classroom is next door! Hey, Freddy, guess what? We came into the wrong classroom today! <laughs> Subtitled or dubbed, Cromartie's off-the-wall humor works in just about every format. And to further prove that hypothesis, allow me to introduce Cromartie High, the movie. Live-action adaptations of anime are something else. Between the unconvincing character portrayals, the wonky-ass costumes that make Power Rangers look like Barry Lyndon, and also the fact that every single one looks like it's about to turn into a porno, their reputation is understandably low. Cromartie's adaptation challenges these negative stereotypes, however, by doing one simple thing. Not giving a fuck. The director of this film did not read the manga or watch the anime. He just took a basic idea of the premise and went for it. He also left the Breaking Bad filter on so everything is piss yellow. This creative freedom allows the film to capture the unfiltered madness that fans expect to see, but with the added bonus of over-the-top Japanese acting. <laughs> It is a relentlessly good time for anyone who appreciates cheesy East Asian cinema, as well as anyone who's ever been curious about what would happen if anime logic was planted in reality. If you can't spare the four and a half hours it takes to watch the show, then at least take an hour and a half to experience this movie. Even if you don't end up enjoying it, it's worth seeing what happens when one of these pointless adaptations is done correctly. Hey, this is Satuchi. Find the guy named Takanuchi there. You tell him he needs to come to Bass, and tell him that he needs to come alone. Is that understood? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fuckface. First, take a big step back, and literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! What? What did you- Whatever you're thinking, you better think again, otherwise I'm gonna have to head down there, and I will rain down on a godly fucking firestorm upon you. You're gonna have to call the fucking United Nations and get a fucking binding resolution to keep me from fucking destroying you. I am talking scorched earth, motherfucker! I will massacre you! I will fuck you up! Damn it! 
Cromarty is not a series that challenges your sensibilities. Its intentions are pure. Each episode is designed to do little more than underline the absurdities of delinquent culture while painting a surrealist picture of the high school setting everyone who watches anime is familiar with. It wasn't the first to do that, and it sure as shit wasn't the last one. Because of its simplicity, one would think there is no grand meaning behind all the nuttiness. No need to look deeply into the moral and ethical implications concealed by dumb non sequiturs and oversized glasses of water. There is no hidden significance in this show. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna try to pull something out of my ass anyway. Alright, listen here. The core theme found within Cromarty, the essence underpinning all of its jokes, is integrity and self-acceptance. Every single cast member is a liar and a fake, masking their true identities with a tough exterior and thuggish appearance, some more literally than others. However, we the audience are allowed to see behind the curtains and recognize how dishonest these people really are. People like Yamaguchi, who appears to be a serious, merciless punk with no sense of humor, secretly longs to be a comedian that makes others laugh, but he can't because he has a reputation to maintain. Most of Cromartie's student body are nothing but tryhards, desperately trying to fit in with the delinquent aesthetic and wouldn't last two seconds in a real fight. And even those who can fight always possess a softer side that only comes out when prodded by figures of complete honesty, like Kamiyama. A man with nothing to hide, and therefore nothing to lose. You might think it sounds as if the show is out to discourage the delinquent lifestyle and admonish the foolish youth that center their lives around masculinity, but that's not the case. The real meaning of the show, like a lot of anime that prefer not to spell out the themes for you, is laid out bluntly right in the opening theme. <laughs> This opening is phenomenal, not just for the kick-ass rhythm, not just for the greatest walk cycle in animated history, but above all else, for its beautifully poetic lyrics about remaining true to oneself and upholding moral dignity without sacrificing the strength that empowers a person. It seeks not to condemn manliness, but to embrace it in all of its most virtuous qualities. It encourages people to not put on a veneer of badassery and make fools of themselves, but to be a true badass like Kamiyama and use your strength to uphold justice the way a real man would. In a nutshell, don't be a fake ass bitch like Hayashida. That mohawk isn't even real. It's a wig. Everything you ever knew was a lie. It's all shit. But it doesn't have to stay that way. There are songs of hope too. I would happily sacrifice my life for this world. That's what the show is all about. Even if the numbers are good, it's trash unless I approve. And this show is trash. <laughs> I'm telling you dude, this show kicks ass. <laughs> so Cromarty High School, it's a good anime. Great even. I admit I may have a personal bias just because of how nostalgic anything from that glorious early 2000s period makes me, but the show has certainly held up well as comedy and anime continues to try and perfect itself into the present day. You may not find it funny, but I did. And I'm the one who made this video, so however you felt doesn't mean jack shit. Regardless, I hope the video itself was enjoyable. This is one I've been wanting to do for a while. Ever since I first kickstarted this whole anime review shtick close to three years ago with Azumanga Daio. I've actually heard quite a few people refer to Cromarty as the all-male version of Azumanga, and I definitely get why. Both take place in high school, both came out roughly around the same time, both have 26 episodes, both have a mascot voiced by Norio Wakamoto, and both feel like drug-induced hallucinations. And also, I love them both. So stop worrying, enjoy the madness. If the world has got you down and you find yourself envying the life of the carefree punk, simply pay a visit to Cromarty High School and come to realize how ridiculous it all really is. Oh wait, I haven't even talked about Mechazawa. You know, there are some absolute dipshits out there that actually believe this guy's a robot. Like, they will argue on social media for hours about this. Bunch of fucking schizos. Yeah, he's shaped sort of like a washing machine. So is my dad. So are you. In fact, forget all that shit I said about being more like Kamiyama. Be a real man, like Mechazawa. Or you can just be a beta. Mecha -mecha.